Wonderful. Hi, everyone. <coughs> Thank you very, very much for coming this evening. This is the Candidates' Night, night sponsored by the Republican Club. Uh, here sit six candidates, uh, all are running for running in the June 5th primary. It's a Republican primary for the two council seats that will be opening up at the end of the year. I just want to go over the procedure so everybody knows what to expect. Each one of the candidates is going to give their presentation. Their presentation will be three minutes long. After that, it will be followed by a question and answer period. The questions, I want to keep it as just one simple question, not a compound kind of question. It will go to all six candidates. They will have one minute to answer. Um, and basically, I think that's about it. Louise, just so everybody has to time. speak up. Everybody has to speak up so that we get it on here because they're the oh, only right. ones who are going to be using yeah, the mic. Right, including, the including yourself. Including yourself. Including me. Okay. Also, make sure have So, be question and answer. They have one minute to answer, and then. A rebuttal by, by someone else they mentioned. So even after they mention, someone else can have a rebuttal after that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we covered it all. Any questions before we start? <laughs> okay. Uh, basically, the candidates are sitting in the order that they will be on the ballot. So we'll start with the first candidate, which is Brian Hurd, in position number one. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. All right. Thank you all for coming. Let me introduce myself. My name is Brian Hurd. Can you hear me now? Yeah. That, uh, my name is Brian Hurd. I was actually born in uh, the original Chilton in 71. I'm married to my wonderful wife, Jennifer. I've got uh, two kids and nine tenths. That means I'm having a boy. Happens to be this Saturday. <laughs> I'm a little busy right now. Um, we moved to this wonderful town in 2006. My grandmother lives here. My aunt lives here. My uh, wife's cousins live here. And they kept on telling us about how great of a town this is. When we moved to the town, I uh, directly got involved right away. I own a little AV company, and what I wanted to do is really give back and become part of the town or the culture of the town. Uh, so what I do is I help people raise money, like the lady Delaney's dream. I've also helped raise money for PD Park. I also do movies for the seniors once a month, and we have a blast. I've been doing that for a couple of years now. I do believe that uh, there's a lot of great things that we can do in this town. I've talked to a lot of people and found out some great ideas, like a Halloween parade that we did last year. It was phenomenal. You know... <laughs> I'm the chair of the flood committee. I'm also on the central basin uh, flood committee. I'm the chair of the economic development committee. I really believe in giving back. But you know what? Enough about me. Let's talk about you. That's why we're here. What we can do for you, the township or the Paquonic, the residents of Paquonic Township. I believe that we can definitely come together. I believe that. We should have a fiscal responsibility in the town. I believe we should have a good tax policy. You know, we're, we're going to have all of our uh, taxes uh, lowered, which is great. I just want to make sure that we can do that year after year. I want to make sure that under economic development that we're doing the right thing. I want to make sure that under flood we're doing the right thing. You know, the good thing about this town is it's 15,000 people, plus or minus. About 6,500 homes, seven square miles. We are truly in charge of our destiny. I think we really need to leverage that. I think we can do it, unlike the towns surrounding us that are much larger. There's things that we can do. I believe we need true leadership, and I believe I can definitely help. Thank you. Good evening, and thank everybody for coming out to discuss the issues of Cornwall Township with the six of us that are running for town council. Some of you know me, others that don't. My name is Ken Hardacre. I first ran for office in Pequannock 
for the Board of Education in 2007, and I remember being told I, I didn't understand how things worked. It couldn't do the things I was talking about. Well, I went back the other day, checked my old campaign piece, and we've accomplished just about everything. Working together, I might add. Over the last five years, I've worked with continually changing mix of board members to take our district from in 2006, what most would agree was a district that was in complete turmoil. The issues with student performance and facility infrastructures, spending too much money and getting no results. And we've been able to work together to completely turn that around. We did debate, we did sometimes argue, but ultimately it led to reasonable compromise on both sides and put our district back on top of, on top of the heap. We've completed major infrastructure at a fraction of what the original 2006 failed referendum called for. Provided dramatic increases in technology in the classroom. New auditoriums, field complex, locker rooms for the boys and girls, desks, infrastructure, fire safety at PV, all kinds of upgrades to the district. And we all work together to do this while increasing tax expense from a general spend budget standpoint, an average of only three tenths of one percent per year over five years. In the last two years, the Board of Education, I've worked five years on the Finance Committee structuring those budgets. I've presented to the public two back-to-back -back years of zero tax increase. The district is moving forward. We're spending less and getting more for our dollar. Aquatic has other issues. Flooding, we need to create a stable, growth-oriented tax policy, business development strategy, and ensuring that these plans are formulated and are done as part of a comprehensive, interconnected plan, including taking into consideration the effects that our actions as town council may have on our schools, even though the board is responsible for that area of governance. The town, the town can and may take actions that could affect those, those schools at both the negative and the positive side. I do not want to hear about what can't be done. I want to start a dialogue about how to make things happen. We can make Paquanic a model community that people want to live in and work in. With the help of your vote, I believe I can play a major role in making that happen. I'm going to stand so everyone can see me. <laughs> sure. Good evening. My name is Rob Cascone, and I'm here tonight to ask for your support in this year's Republican Council primary. I'm a lifelong resident of Aquanic Township. I've grown up here. I've lived here all my life. I remember playing on the hill at, Be at Greenview Park, sledding down it in the winter. I remember jumping off the raft at Phoebe Park in the summer. I just got married to my beautiful wife, Heather, in October, and I want to stay in town to raise my family here and to have my children enjoy the same benefits that I did growing up in Aquanic Township. I've been a long-time community volunteer, starting out delivering meals to the patients at Chilton Hospital, and I quickly thought I could do more. So over a decade ago, I joined the Paquan Township First Aid and Rescue Squad, and I've been there ever since. I'm proud to say that I served previously as its chief officer, and currently serve as its trustee. I'm also on the Economic Development Commission, and serve as vice chair this year, and co-chair last year. I've also been involved in the Republican Party, our party, for almost a decade, working on races from town council to the governor of the state of New Jersey. I've been a member of this organization for the last six years. I'm proud that for the last two, it has elected me its president. During my tenure as president, I've worked hard to bring the Republican principles that I, hear, that I hold so dear to this club fiscal responsibility, and conservative ide ideals. And Republican leaders across the state have taken notice. And I'm proud to be endorsed by a majority of our Republican freeholders, our Morris County Sheriff, and the President of the New Jersey League of Municipalities, the Mayor of Mount Arlington, Art Andrews. I don't want to kid you, Aquanic is a great town, but we can do better. We are a town that families seek to move to and couples seek to retire. But we need to put policies in place so, so that we can keep that year after year 
for the inevitable future. The first thing we need to do is increase our economic base, attract new businesses, so that we can increase our commercial rateables, therefore keeping a budget that is healthy and provides the programs and services that the residents of Aquatic love about this town, while reducing property taxes on the residential homeowners. The other thing we need to do is solve the ever too frequent problem of flooding. And to do that, we need someone who has relationships in place, someone who can work with other officials in the higher branches of government, not only to find, but more importantly, to fund the solutions that will end this ever too frequent tragedy to our community. I'd like to thank the Republican Club for hosting this. I look forward to your questions. I hope to get your support on June 5th. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dave Cole. I would like to thank the Republican Club and all the residents for coming out tonight. Uh, I have lived in town for 47 years. I'm one of six uh, children. Uh, we all grew up on Sunset Road. My mom, Darlene, has uh, had lived in town for 73 years before passing uh, in April of 2011. She raised five of us by herself. Uh, she worked two jobs just to keep the house that we live in and the, the five of us, or six of us, together. <coughs> Uh, she taught us how to uh, she taught us how to value the dollar, how to save our money, and how to respect people and treat people the, the way that we would like to be uh, treated. I've been married to my wife Angela for 22 years. Angela has taught Spanish at PTHS for the last 27 years. We have twin sons, Joseph and Benjamin, both graduates of PTHS. Uh, Joe has just finished his freshman year at Quinnipiac, and Ben has just finished his freshman year at Montclair. My wife and I have been property owners in Pequannock Township since 1990, and we currently reside at 47 Colfax Drive. I'm currently president of the Boys and Girls Club of Northwest New Jersey. I have been a board member of the Boys and Girls Club since 2003. I have been a member of the Pequannock Parks and Rec Advisory Board since 2008. In 2011, I served as chairman, and currently I am vice chairman of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. I'm also uh, currently on the Pequannock uh, Township Long Range Planning Committee. I've done a number of things uh, with the youth in town. I've coached Little League, junior football, uh, been the Lakeland basketball coordinator, uh, and I've been the junior football uh, commissioner since 2005. If anyone out in the audience would like to take that job, I'd be more than happy to give it away. I'm proud to say I've been recognized uh, for my volunteer efforts at several levels. In 2007, I was uh, presented the President's Volunteer Service Award and the Boys and Girls Club Board Member of the Year Award. In 2008, I received the Friends of the National Football League and the Boys and Girls Club of America uh, Friends of uh, Football Award. Uh, and in 2009, I was honored to become the uh, two uh, 2009 Citizen of the Year for Pequannock Township. It's been a great pleasure to see the township change and grow during my lifetime. I want to serve on town, town, town council because I want to help the community continue to grow uh, continue to grow. Uh, lost my place here because I want to see the continue to grow uh, for and to a, for a place where people want to live, a place where taxes are stable while providing a great police department, two outstanding volunteer fire departments, our fantastic first aid squad, a place where the Department of Public Works takes pride in the things they do, a place where community spirit is strong and neighbors look out for each other, a place where I want to live the rest of my life. This is my home. I have the best interest uh, for all residents of the Pawnee Township, young and old. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Shay Vanderhoff. I'd like to thank the Republican Club for hosting this and the residents for coming out. I'm a lifelong resident of the Pawnee for the past 58 years. I'm like my other candidates up here. I was not born in Chilton. It was a foundation in the ground at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I've owned my, we've owned our Mountain Ave home since 1979. I'm married to my wife Jan for the last 37 years, and we have two children, Caitlin and Jesse. Both have graduated from the Pine School System. Uh, both graduated uh, school system. My son Jesse graduated from Stevens Tech in Hoboken, is now employed as a mechanical engineer. And I'm proud to say that Caitlin will graduate on Saturday from Marist College. In Poughkeepsie. 
I've been employed in Dequine Township at Reynolds Limited for the last 37 years, serving as general, general manager for the last 34. I've been serving the township since 1998, when I was appointed to the Board of Adjustment. Since then, I've served on the Environmental Commission, Open Space Committee, liaison to the fire companies for the last eight years, Shade Tree Commission, and the Planning Board for the last 22 years. Since 2005, I've participated in the various Passaic River flood boards, trying to find a path that will help to minimize the flooding. In 2004, I was elected to the council. I have served as both mayor and deputy mayor. <coughs> During my tenure on council, I promoted many projects to move forward, including sewers, the recreational master plan, which have led to many recreation facility upgrades, the water blending facility, which is now under contract, uh, this year, we put in a $50,000 capital line item for flood relief. Uh, also, the flood pro home buyout program, road projects, to name a few. I believe one of the most important undertakings was the search for a new manager. The new manager has set new expectations for employees and new level of service for the township. I'm proud to say that we now have more, we do more with less. As a councilman, I pride myself in the fact that I can work well with others. Why not always agreeing? We have always found a meaningful solution in a professional manner. We have a great town. It has always been my prime objective to keep it that way. At the beginning of each year, you read about our neighboring towns having massive budget shortfalls, cutting employees, cutting services, and raising taxes to the maximum. Through good planning, we have increased services, kept taxes to a minimum, and reduce our employee count through attrition. I would like to thank the residents for letting me serve on the council, and I ask for your support for another four years. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christopher Lotito, and I just want to say I'm very excited to have this opportunity to speak with all of you tonight. Since there were five other candidates before me, I'll keep my comments short and to the point. For those who do not know me, I'm a lifelong resident of Pequannock and owner of a locally based technical services company. I'm also the author of PequannockNews.com. I hold a bachelor's degree from Drew University in nearby Madison and have studied business in Iceland at the University of Reykjavik. All of the candidates have been on commissions. All of us have volunteered in the community and all of them are great guys but I am uniquely qualified to step directly into the office of councilman. I have attended nearly every council meeting in the past several years. In addition, I have been integral in the Walkable Communities Project, as well as the restoration of the Compton Plains Railroad Station. Over the past decade, I have served as Secretary of the Historic District Commission, the Open Space Commission, and the Flood Committee. As a member of the Environmental Commission, I worked on the development of Pequannock's Environmental Resources Inventory. In April of 2012, I personally negotiated on behalf of Pequannock with the State Archives for a discount of over $10,000 on the acquisition of a new collection of records for our community. The records themselves, some 200 years of history relating to the Morris Canal and flooding throughout the region, is available now at Pequannock Library for any who are interested. Pequannock's people need a thriving local economy. As councilman, I intend to launch volunteer tourism and public transportation committees to ensure that our three business districts are bustling with customers. The Economic Commission has done a great job helping the business owners. This is the other half of that project that needs to occur. Pequannock's people need federal funding to alleviate flooding. We cannot keep buying homes and eroding our tax base. We cannot elevate the entirety of the village. We need alternatives for homeowners and the community. As councilman, I will work tirelessly to pursue the federal funds we've already paid into as taxpayers. The government holds no funds but those which it has been granted by its citizens. We must demand a return on our investment in state and federal government to achieve a greater flood solution. You know, I love Pequannock. It's my home, it's people, my family. I've been working and learning in the community as a volunteer for a decade, and I can't wait to get started as a council member doing so much more for all of you.
on questions and answers. Uh, anyone want to start? And, and remember, speak up, please. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike me, Ruth. Yes, I'd like to ask each candidate uh, if they support spending open space money to complete the Riverwalk. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Ruth. Absolutely not. I do not think we should be spending our open space money for the Riverwalk. I think we've done enough buyouts. I do believe that buyouts are good in certain scenarios. I think right against the river, they're a good idea. I said, but at the end of the day, I do not believe in buying out any more homes. There's a better solution out there. As far as the Riverwalk, I don't believe in using open space funds for that. Anybody else? I think that we've used a vast majority of the open space funds over the last few years uh, to deal with the Riverwalk project and for buyouts in general. I think since the county has come in, is going to pick up the balance uh, that's left over from FEMA, that there are better uses uh, for that tax money if the public continues uh, to vote to have that tax burden. Um, you have to remember the, the open space tax was a tax voted on by the public and it's a dedicated tax for open space and recreation. So if, if the public so chooses to continue that, to, to go for other open space in town or for mostly recreation, I think at this point, then that's something that the town can use to revitalize our recreation department, I think specifically uh, for the rehabilitation of PV Park. So. I think since the county has come in and is picking up that balance, that the funds can be used for bigger projects that benefit the entire community. Uh, as a general rule, I'm, I'm opposed to the Riverwalk, uh, and particularly generally opposed to using any funds that come from the county and or the state that put restrictions on what the township of Quantic can do with property inside its boundaries. Um, I, I appreciate um, the purchase of homes directly in, in the floodway on the river. I, I just believe that there are better alternatives than cannibalizing our tax base for a river walk that quite honestly, um, I, I think we're going to honestly get minimal use of if it ever gets completed. But it's my understanding that there are some obstacles in the way, including properties that, that have no intention at this time of, of granting us a right of way to get through them. So uh, my, I, I am opposed any further expense where the river walk is concerned. I will support it if we can get all the homeowners and property owners uh, to uh, agree to the river walk. Uh, I believe there's also a number of other projects that the open space money can be used for. Uh, there are restrictions on the open space money. Uh, recreation is one of them. Uh, the, the home buyouts that we have been doing is the other. Uh, I think we did a great job with the home buyouts. Uh, but I think, you know, we're going to, uh, you know, put it out to the, uh, to the organizations in town, let them submit a proposal of what they would like open space money for, and then we'll see how that, uh, that works out. But I'm in favor. The open space we actually acquired most of the uh, residential properties needed for Riverwalk. Uh, when it was started, the main purpose was not so much a Riverwalk, but to take people out of harm's way. These were floodway houses. We were putting our emergency services into great danger of going out there. Uh, so it was a way to do it. I guess so good that the county has now copied our plan and is uh, using it also. But we're down to a lot of easements, which I think a lot of them can be negotiated out at very, very low cost. Uh, I think we can have both. I do believe we should move on to other projects. I think we can also finish the river walk at minimum cost, and the benefit that has been derived from it, I think, far outweighs the expense that we put into it. I think there's multiple questions in here. Uh, the river walk is a project that's been in the works for 30 years, and it's now, at this point, 90 plus percent complete. I think it would be fiscally irresponsible not to complete it one way or another, whether that's by uh, negotiating uh, easements through the property, 
or uh, negotiating for the sale of those properties, uh, not completing it at this point would be just plain silly. Uh, and uh, as far as open space funds are concerned, uh, I don't have any open space funds. Those are the people's funds. And we need people like you to come to our meetings <laughs> and to let us know what projects you would like to see pursued with those funds and how those monies should be spent. Thank you. Anyone else? Question. Tom Turner. Here's Tom Turner with six camera. Uh, flooding is a tremendous impact, or has a tremendous impact on everybody in the community. This past year when we had the hurricane, it affected more than 25% of our citizens. Even more than that, because it closes down our roads, we have our main thoroughfare affected by all the traffic that goes down 23. All of you in your opening statements talked about flood in one way or another. My question to you is, what do you intend to do? What is your plan moving forward if you get elected to the council to remediate the issue that we have with flooding in the township? Is that a plant? <laughs> the flooding flooding is one of the main issues, if not the biggest issue, affecting our town. And I think we need a real leader in place that can work with the elected officials both across the river from us, down the river from us, up the river from us, and then the higher branches of government to put a real plan in place. Uh, the governor came out with a 15-point flood mitigation plan. I'm a fan of the governor. I worked on his campaign. My one criticism of the governor is that we have this plan in place and it has barely been funded, if at all, just for the small amounts of uh, uh, removing uh, some trees that we did. That's not going to make one bit of difference. Uh, you've heard about the flood tunnel, dikes and levees. Both of those plans, I think, are, are too expensive and not beneficial in the short term for our residents. I would propose flood storage, uh, mainly at Aquatic Park. I've talked to uh, our township engineer. We could put up a 10-foot wall and dig down 15 feet and create a 25-foot deep flood basin that we can control. And we need other communities to do that as well. I'm also concerned about the flooding in town. Um, and I agree with Rob. It's, it's, it's got to be more than just the town. It can't be uh, just the town... Uh, it has to go to the state. We have to push the state uh, elected officials, the federal elected officials. Uh, there has to be an answer. There has to be something better that we can do for the people. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know if I could do, uh, go through one flood and then another flood and another flood, like some of the people in this town have gone through. Uh, I, you know, I don't have much hair on my head, but you know what? I, I pulled my hair on that from the first one. So it's got to be a bigger thing, a bigger project for all of us. And on the local level, we have to push the state, and the state has to push the, the federal government to, to help. On the local level, we can do our stream cleaning. We can affect maybe the 10-year flood. Uh, we need state and federal aid. There's no doubt the project has to be extremely big. Uh, still, you know, advocate of the flood tunnel. That's a tremendous amount of water moved downstream very quickly and out of our area. Flood storage is good, but for something like Irene, or even half that magnitude, the, the tremendous amount of storage you need is unbelievable. Uh, Hurricane Floyd that we had in 99, I believe that Wanaku Reservoir was like 40%. At the end of that event, it was filled. You know, so that shows you the type of storage that you need uh, to hold this. But uh, we're very hard at flood control. And whatever we can do, uh, we need state and federal to help us out. I think that uh, any solution to uh, flooding uh, is, is going to have to be uh, tailored to uh, the various individuals who are affected. My family was affected, and the solution uh, for, for my household is not going to be the same as the solution for your household or for your household. 
uh, and that's why we need a complete tool set of uh, tools that can be used by the homeowners to address their uh, particular situations. Uh, I'm not thrilled about eroding our tax base and doing any more buyouts. Uh, frankly, I'm not in favor of doing any more buyouts, but I also respect uh, residents' right to get out of the flood zone uh, as they so choose. And uh, I too think that we do need to focus on getting federal and state funding uh, because we've paid into these programs over decades. And uh, we absolutely have a right to this money. This is our money, and this is our time that we should have this back for our flood solution. Thank you. <laughs> Might be our money, but don't plan on giving it back to us. The federal government, the state government, are not going to come on a big white horse and save the day. For the most part, we're going to have to figure out how to fix the problem ourselves. We're going to have to come up with some unique solutions to get the project uh, underway. First of all, um, the governor, I, I got a couple issues with the governor, but one of them is he can do something right away in, in terms of getting legislation passed that has been presented some eight times over the last 12 years that would enable the Department of Environmental Protection to have authority over water levels at our reservoirs and tell the reservoir companies, yes, you may have an asset in your hole in the ground called water, but when the uh, degree of water you have in those reservoirs is going to jeopardize everyone downstream, we have the ability to tell you to get that water and drain it uh, prior to uh, a flooding event. Um, I agree with some of the things that have been said here tonight. We need to dredge all of our rivers and streams. Should have done it a long time ago. We need to find a way to get that done. Prior to incoming floods, we need to create a system that will allow us to pump out areas where we currently have water. Sorry, damn. Um, talk about later. Thank you. <laughs> I do agree that there are things that we can do with the federal government. FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant would be one of them. We can use that for elevation. But as I said in my opening statement, we are really in charge of our own destiny. It's our responsibility to start thinking outside of the box. We can actually use, we have a piece of gold, a pot of gold, Route 23 North. <laughs> combination of commercial properties, combination of flood storage, elevated buildings, some kind of uh, flood walls. Listen, up in Riverdale, they blew a top off of a mountain. Commercial properties are valuable. It's also going to help our tax base. It's going to help our economic stability. It's something we need to look at. We need to think outside of the box. Thank you. The only problem with dredging our rivers uh, is that if the communities above us are not dredging their rivers, everything eventually is just going to come right back down and it's going to be an ongoing issue that we could be dredging our rivers and doing, using that expense uh, every year, I mean, if we have to. Unless we can get everyone involved above us and below us, dredging the river really is, to my opinion, is not going to work. I don't think... An individualized plan for aquatic is what we need, what was, is best for us, or anything that the state or federal government is going to fund. The state and the federal government are not going to come in and say, okay, we're going to do this at one house and this at one house and this at another house. And a plan just for aquatic, just like Dave said, isn't going to work if the towns upstream from us aren't on board and are doing what's right by us with their development. It's an interstate issue. The amount of water that we're getting from New York State down the railroad boat and down the Pompton Falls is much more than it ever was. So it's a federal issue. And I think what everyone on here agrees with is that we need effective leadership that can actively lobby the higher branches of government at the state and at the federal level so that we get our money back. I'm not one to say we shouldn't send it in the first place, but since it's down there already, I don't think it should just be lost and we shouldn't try to get it back. We don't get nearly our fair share of return on our income tax dollars, and we need to change that to help with flooding. On a local level, we're going to solve uh, a minimal amount. Uh, we can take care of local flooding on streets, uh, some of the houses that are in low-lying areas. But it has to be on a federal level and state. Uh, it's a regional project. project that has to be undertaken. Uh, we cannot do it in town alone. We need many towns together. We need the federal government. And it has to be all coordinated together. 
Uh, one town trying to undertake it is just going to flood another town more severely. I just want to say that uh, I'm currently serving as secretary of the flood committee and that uh, whether I'm uh, elected or otherwise, I intend to set a personal goal of ending flooding in our community. And uh, I hear a lot of um, partial solutions here. Uh, I think that we need to set a goal. Uh, whatever progress we make on that over time, we need to set that correct goal of ending flooding because we have a right to not be chased out of our homes by floodwaters several days for every year. Thank you. And here we are back to the same old problem that flooding has had in this town for quite some time. And I'm sorry I did ran out of time the last time. I've been in a flooded home. Had over four feet of water in my house. Had to clean it all up. Did what I had to do and getting back to, to my life. Thank the town for what they did trying to help us clean up. But the bottom line is we can no longer just sit here and say boo boo. We can't do anything because the federal government's got to be involved and the state's got to be involved. I don't much care about the federal government or the state. And quite honestly, I'm going to work real hard to come up with a proposal that I can convince our neighbors to participate in. But my primary concern, as it is in my current position, and I hope to have in my new position, is the township of Paquonic and how we protect Paquonic citizens. That's my primary goal as a member of the council. And we can do something about flooding. We cannot simply accept this. It's not acceptable. I agree. We're great at being reactive. We're great at cleaning up the mess. We come together as a town to help everybody out. We need to be proactive. It's time that we start looking at solutions. Federal government, but guess what? I've been flooded three times in the last 24 months, and the federal government really isn't there. We need to start doing something for ourselves, and we can. We need to leverage everything that's within our own township, within our ability. And speak loud. Speak <laughs> loud. Anthony Frankino. Uh, two questions. One was McDonald Beach. Since uh, Mr. Vanderhoff is the last city member on the council that uh, voted for McDonald Beach and gave uh, gave it over to Bedan. Uh, and he chopped down all the trees. I don't know how many inches we would have saved in flood water, but I think we would have saved something. Uh, the other thing is you mentioned uh, water before mixing. And you know with me and you, that's my favorite subject because I've been uh, yelling about that for well over uh, 12 years. And I remember when you were uh, mayor and right before you were mayor on the council, you stated that we were mixing water. We sir, weren't doing it. Sir, please just How do you question. answer that question that we weren't doing it, and yet you said we were for over 12 years? Is that, I should uh, say something about It's two story. questions, Louise, not one, two. I asked for two. It was two. Oh, well, now we're only one? I'm sorry. Yep. I'll take one back. I don't know what the question is. What do you think you're doing with Donald Beach? Beach? Just restate. Make, it, make Beach. it just one simple question. Uh, it just said it. Donald Beach. What should we do with it? Should we allow Berdan to build a castle there? Okay. Thank you, Anthony. Very good. Thank you. Donald Beach. Absolutely not. Within reason. What we need to do is we need to talk to them. We need to get them back to the table. We need to make sure that this project is going to be built the right way. That's not going to affect any of the neighbors. Number one. Number two, we need access to their lakes in time of need. I need to drop a pump there. I need to pump those lakes out. And I need to have flood mitigation for my town. If he's willing to do that, we can go forward on the build because we can use the tax base. I don't know how you can say absolutely not within reason. That's kind of, <laughs> um, but along with what Brian said, I think we need to work with uh, the Dan so that we can ensure that whatever he builds there, whether it's the castle or 
is the next grandiose idea, would not have an increased effect of flooding on the residents. If, if we can do that, then I think we need to do everything possible to develop the Route 23 corridor in a flood conscientious manner. That's the one way that we can reduce property taxes while keeping the services that we want in town, whether it's parks and rec, police, or fire. So if we can work with our business owners on the highway so that they can build in an appropriate manner so that we can have a negative flood impact, but bring in jobs and commercial rateables, I think that's a win-win for everybody. <coughs> and to clarify what Ryan was saying, the, the project, in my mind, cannot go forward as uh, currently planned. Any project must be a negotiation in which if you want to develop on our land, I have no problem, provided you're going to do things that work into a long-term plan with the township that are going to facilitate flood control. You can't simply build on a flood-prone piece of land and tell me that everything's going to be okay. Uh, everything's not going to be okay, and we need to make sure that if they want something, we get something, meaning the residents, we get something in return. They want to build there because they think they can make money. That's fine. We have a flooding problem. I want you to invest some of your money, which also helps you, because if I can control flooding, I can keep your property from going underwater and having your customers unable to reach your destination. To be honest with you, I don't think he has the money, and I don't think he's going to get, get anyone to invest into building the castle on that piece of property. I think we really should have pushed the issue five, seven, ten years ago when he presented this uh, to the town. Um, I really don't know if there's anything we can do right now. I believe he has all of his DEP permits and all of his uh, flood retention basin whatever he needs to get from the state. Um, but to be honest with you, I, I can't see it being built there. It'll surprise me if it ever happens. Okay. Uh, first comment was the uh, zone change for that was before I was on council. Okay. Uh, I don't disagree with developing, you know, safely in the floodplain. Yes. And it's covered by DEP rules. Some of the comments you made, there's things called municipal land use laws, uh, which some statements were in direct violation of that. Uh, that site also is, meets the 100 year flood plain, but you have to realize that in a 25 year flood, it's already inundated. So I do say, you know, putting the castle there, it is approved, he met all state regulations he had to. Will ever happen? I do not know. I just can't imagine taking the phone call from some bride and telling her that you know today's not going to be the day because it's a little wet. It just doesn't make any sense. So, uh, but there are regulations we have to follow as municipality. Uh, everything was followed there, uh, like it or not. It was zoned. It was uh, actually that was already in the zone for the highway. But any development on the highway you know, has to follow the rules and regulations that are in place. Uh, and, and that's the bottom line. I'm having deja vu here. You may recall me uh, from when I was across the street at the meetings over the uh, uh, zoning change uh, before the planning board for the Metro Stars uh, project about uh, 10 years ago on this same piece of property. And uh, while it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot that we can do now, if you think that the castle is bad, uh, that area is zoned such that we could have a seven-story office building there. My question is why we haven't addressed uh, the hole that permits that in a flood zone yet. And I can tell you that if I'm elected, that's one of the first issues that I will address why we're permitting seven-story office buildings in that area. That said, any time you make a property unbuildable by legislation, as a municipality, you are obligated to purchase that property, which is another issue. Um, I'd like to know from each of the candidates, beyond the issue of flooding and flood-related issues, what do you see as the most pressing issue the township is facing 
and what's your solution to it? I'll start. Other than flood relief, it's property tax relief. There is only, now that we have the 2% cap in place, at least the state is using some sort of a stick to get the council to stop spending. And we've had that in place for a long time, so we weren't affected not nearly as badly as, as other towns with layoffs and, and fees, which the state's now addressing. But Pequannock is a community, and we get our community spirit from some of the services that the town has, whether it's PB Park and investing in that, whether it's the Halloween parade that I was in year after year growing up, and I'm glad to see us back in some fashion. Our Parks and Rec, the senior house that you're sitting in now, our police department and our fire departments. So in order to keep those services that we want and not have increased taxes, we need to really develop our economic base and our commercial rate of bulls. Thank you. And first filling the empty storefronts in town and de then developing the highway in the flood conscientious manner. And I would, for the most part, uh, agree with him, but on, on the tax policy, which we must develop a stable tax policy, um, this town will not survive if we just keep raising taxes uh, across the board, and that, that involves the school board, which has done, pretty much done its job for the last couple of years, as well as the town council. But I, I look at it from a different angle. We, we don't have a taxing problem, we have a spending problem. Um, our, our township needs to learn to spend within our means. Not, not their version of our means, our version of our means. So um, these numbers have to be looked at. I know everybody says it can't be done, we'll lose services, we'll lose this, we'll lose that. I can tell you categorically, we did it at the schools, we have not cut programs, we've actually increased some programs, we used the money we had smarter, and we found ways to get more with less. It can be done. Again, we have a spending problem, not a taxing problem. All the comments are made. We have been moving forward over the years for that. We are coming, moving now towards being debt free. Uh, this year was the first year we actually did not fund any capital projects with the uh, bonding. Uh, so we are moving in the right direction. It's a slow, slow it's process. The plan was started probably 15 years ago and is now actually within reach. Uh, we have less employees. Uh, the cap on uh, negotiations for police salaries is going to be a great savings for the town. Uh, we're moving more and more towards uh, contributions from employees on medical. So there's been great progress. And you have to look over a 10-year period to see the direction we're going. It's not black and white, it's not overnight, but we are moving in the right direction. And I do agree, there's more to do. Uh, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but uh, taxes uh, probably our next biggest concern and keeping all of the, the great programs and services that we have in town. Um, you know, I, I don't know how, uh, you know, what, what program would, or programs or services we would cut, uh, but we would have to give, uh, you know, a serious look at all of the programs and, and services that we have in town and it's going to be a difficult situation, but um, you know, taxes, we can't keep on just raising taxes. I don't know how this became a uh, property tax question, but uh, the current council has done a great job in not increasing the, the property taxes, uh, the municipal budget in the past uh, two years. And uh, I, I think that's fairly unique. They've also adopted a uh, spend as you go method where, again, they're not incurring uh, any new debt. And uh, all of you in the audience, the majority of you, have seen a decrease in your property <coughs> taxes as a result of the recent uh, revaluation. If you want to address the property tax uh, issue, and I, I don't think anybody doesn't, property taxes online mm -hmm. in Quantic, uh, one of the things that you need to look at is the economic issue. The AMP site was one of the largest uh, commercial taxpayers in Quantic. And now we've had this flooding issue, and this is all tied in together, and now it's sitting empty. And if you think that we're going to be, be able to continue to collect that same rate of corporate taxes from them, that's going to be an issue. We also have uh, what I kind of like to call Pompton Lake Syndrome, where you're looking at storefronts 
that are only full for about six months at a time and then fail. That's another issue that we need to address. Well, Chris, part of the problem is your tax... Oh, you can go here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck at the end. Okay. I said I wanted to hear from all of you. I took 10 seconds of his time. I can only get an end to 10 seconds. I do agree, too, tax policy. And I do agree that we don't have a taxing problem, we have a spending problem. Uh, that is in our town, and that goes all the way up to the top of government. I agree that we have a pumped in lakes issue. We need to be more business friendly, and we actually are working towards that. That's a good thing. We need to entice and encourage businesses to locate in town to stay in town, to build in town, to expand in town. So if we do it right, we really can have everything. But again, we're in charge of our own destiny. We need true leadership to accomplish this. Now you want to say something? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I absolutely believe in residential property tax reductions, and I applaud the attempt to try and get them. What I have an issue with is the method that was used to do so. I don't want to take property taxes down at the expense of my local businesses. Um, so what we effectively done is said, well, we're going to take the, the money from, uh, from Peter uh, and, and give it to Paul. That's not a sustainable model either. We're going to reduce taxes. We need to reduce taxes across the board, not simply say the residential people win and our businesses get an $840,000 bill to pick up the tab. Um, there's also some of this year's budget. Yes, it's only one and a half percent. Would have preferred it was zero, but that one and a half percent, a portion of that, comes from excess surplus they have in the water budget, which, quite honestly, was money that was collected for services that we hadn't rendered yet. So there's 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 a question as to how uh, you get a sustainable reduction in taxes across the board and maintain services. Not an easy question to answer, but it can be done. The other part of increasing our commercial rateables and bringing more businesses to the area is having the town become more business friendly. And what we're doing on economic development and what we was presented to the council at the last council meeting is eliminating some of these archaic ordinances that make businesses just pass us over. I don't know if anyone knew, but it's illegal to have a drive through in town. Well, every bank has one, CVS has one, Bruno's is only a drive through but they're pre-existing non-conforming use. So economic development brought the council a plan to do away with that ordinance on the Route 23 corridor so that fast food chains that want to locate on Route 23 in town now have that ability. The other thing for small business owners is the prohibition against A-frame signs. I mean, if we want a thriving economic climate, we need to take the handcuffs off business owners and give them the tools to use so that they can improve their business and help us out on our tax base. <coughs> Uh, one thing to clear up, the council does not shift the burden of who gets taxed. It's a rebound. We do not have the ability to say, okay, commercial's going to pay more. It's a rebound across the whole town. They come in, commercial did not lose as much value during this recession as residential did. So that's why the burden shifted. It is not something the council picked. Uh, example, the budget is 1.5%. We are covering a $1.5 million debt for the flood. So if you look at our budget and figure we're paying a million and a half, we're doing pretty good keeping that 1.5%. 1, 1. So, all right, uh, that covers the statements. Uh, Chris wants a rebuttal. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I'd, I'd like to further clarify and uh, remind everybody that the revaluation was in fact the, the will of the people communicated by an extraordinary number of tax appeals over the last few years, uh, so much so that uh, the current council decided that it, it was time to do a full revaluation as that would be more affordable than doing the independent uh, tax appeals. So. Mm -hmm. To build on what uh, Rob was saying, under economic development, we're also pushing out a buy local campaign. 
called pick the quantity. And again, as I said before, it, we're, we have a, we're in charge of our own destiny. By buying from your local merchants within town, it's amazing how many different small businesses are within town. You really can get everything. The only thing that we're lacking is some kind of A&P or, or King's Food Town, something. We definitely need something there. But realistically, you could do everything within town. So a buy local campaign will help us, and it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. It keeps our businesses strong, and we're supporting our own residents, because most of those uh, small businesses are owned by our own residents. Thank you. Marco Solution. I have a question. If any one of you gets elected, will you be able to work for one dollar? As other people on the council is, I'd like to hear from every one of you, please. At least a pledge. I'll start. Thank you, Rocco. <laughs> sure. I believe in giving back to the community. I have no issue with donating my time and doing what's needed. I'm willing to work the long hours, to go the distance, and I am willing to work for one dollar a year. Anybody else? I've been doing it for five years. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't anticipate that I was going to be getting uh, 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 wealthy by taking this spot. Uh, sat on the board for five years, just current well, last two years now, chair of two committees, sit on two others, uh, spend a lot of time with my fellow board members dealing with school business, and i um, perfectly happy with the satisfaction of watching things move forward. I'm not going to pledge to take one dollar. I don't know if the stipend is appropriate at the level it's at, but I know that one dollar is really handcuffing our council. I think if you ask the current council, the amount of fundraisers that they have to go to is astronomical. So any stipend that I take, whatever the level is, would first be reinvested in the community with my attendance to those fundraisers and helping out those community organizations. I think the one thing our council needs to do a better job at is being more visible to the higher branches of government, both on the county, state, and federal level. And by not taking a stipend, they're not going to those events where people get to know them. So we're really losing money because we're not getting the county aid, the state aid, and the federal aid in return because our elected officials are not really representing us to the best of their ability by only taking a dollar. <laughs> it wasn't me, by the way, which I should have done. And other people do take a dollar on the council. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to pledge on that either, Rocco. Um, right now, I believe the mayor and the council are re-examining uh, the pay structure for the council. So. You know, why should I say yes when I, I don't know what their going plans are to change it? Uh, I believe it's going to be uh, talked about relatively soon. So I will say when they have the discussion, I will be part of, hopefully be part of that discussion. I do a, vol I do a lot of volunteering right now that I do not get paid one penny for. I mean, people in town think that I actually work for the Boys and Girls Club. I work for State Farm Insurance Monday through Friday. So... Uh, I do a lot of volunteer. I will not pledge the dollar. The money we get goes back to the community. From one fundraiser to another, there's enough ex-council people in this room that can tell you that you know it's not money in your pocket. It goes back. Uh, I think Chris was saying the last couple of years with the kids in college, economic downturn where I took a hefty pay cuts so or our lower employees would remain, remain in place. Uh, there would be nothing to get back. It's been tough times for everybody. But I will make that pledge because the money does go back to the community. And it's looked for at times. Uh, my comment is that uh, we can't have the council uh, where several people are taking a dollar and some people aren't taking any money, preferably, and some people are taking the full stipend, and uh, that's something that needs to be addressed. And I'm hoping that that's one of the things that the council is going to be addressing uh, in part when they reconsider the uh, current stipend. I do believe that the current stipend is uh, excessive. 
And I think that whatever figure is put out there will hopefully be much more reflective of the actual expenses incurred uh, by somebody on council. But I think it's essential that we don't do away with the ability at least to be reimbursed for some of the expenses of being on council because we do not want to discourage those who might not be uh, independently wealthy from participating in government. Is it's on the council agendas for the fall to discuss this stuff? So, and that was brought up quite a while ago. We have a recreational master plan in place for a few years. How do you feel about it, and do you are willing to continue and finish the plan? Mm -hmm. I think the question, Lou, was we have a master recreation plan in yeah. place. How do we feel about continuing the master plan and completing what was on the master plan? That was the question. I'll be honest, I'm not completely familiar with the recreational master plan. And if elected, that would be one of the first things that I would have to be brought up to speed on. What I do know is that one of the benefits of Pequannock Township is the rec recreational system that we have in place for our children. I want to see that expanded so that we include more young adults to draw more young families into the community and hopefully combat the uh, schooling problem that Ken seems to think we have where he might propose that we become a receiving district. So I think if we have a better recreational system and draw on those young families, we can fill those empty seats in the school and hopefully not have that happen and, and stay one district with just the Quantic Township. Um, but we need to improve the fields, but we need to do so in a responsible manner where the residents are notified ahead of time and we don't get into the problem that we saw with the Petiri Court situation uh, by North Boulevard, where everything was done last minute and after the fact. Now, I look at it this way. At least I'm open enough to explain to the community that we have a 10% attrition rate in our schools over the last five years with a forecast for an additional 10. And explaining to them that there are ramifications to a runoff in your school district. It could mean higher taxes to run schools because we, we, we still have to keep them going. Here's the problem. And again, you, there's, there's a report, I know it's disputed, there, there's reports that we could buy up to 88 homes. Every home you buy, particularly in a low-income area, is a family that's not going to move in here with children. That's going to have a negative effect on your enrollment. What my goal was, and what my stated plan was, was to make sure Pequannock remained a control of its own school district, as opposed to the state saying we don't meet critical mass, and then merge us in with someone else. That, to me, is unacceptable. As to recreation, I believe the board has done a tremendous job at uh, facilitating the township's needs for fields with their two turf fields and the balance of phase two, three, and four. Um, he's talking about recreation play. So um, we've, we've worked to help the town get that done. I am not familiar with the recreation plan. All I do have to say is as long as we are being fiscally responsible and we're not going to increase taxes, we can definitely take a look at it. And if elected, I also would need to be brought up to speed. Thank you. I, uh, I would support the recreation uh, master plan. I believe it was a company called Perini that came in and, uh, and uh, created the Pannoni. Uh, created the master plan for the uh, town. Uh, I believe that there's a number of things that are on that master plan that possibly could be uh, brought forward uh, and possibly some of the open space money uh, used for it. And my, my thing right now would be, you know, a PV park was a, is, it's still a great place, but the water quality was better at one time when we were able to drain it. Let's fix the problem, let's spend the money, let's fix the problem, and put PV, back, PV Park back the way it was uh, when I was a kid. That we can drain it, the water is clear, you can actually go in, see your feet. Uh, that'd be one thing that uh, I would think that uh, the Parks and Rec Master Plan should address. Thank you. 
Recreation Master Plan is created to give the township or the council guidance in rebuilding our parks. Uh, some of the ideas in there will never be, never come to uh, fulfillment. There's some grand ideas, nice, but not within our means. Uh, we've started Greenview. We're working forward, doing it in a financial, responsible manner. Uh, Greenview was two steps to do it. We're now building the Washington Park general purpose field which has been over a couple of years. So uh, we're going to move the parks forward, bring them up to date, uh, and we're going to do it financially responsibly. Uh, so that's two items that were out of the master plan. There was a note in there about a uh, park of park in the village area, and we have acquired a house there for the sewer project, and that will also be done. Uh, in my work with the Environmental uh, Commission, the Environmental Resources Inventory has uh, been completed in the past two years. And uh, with the Open Space Commission, uh, we're just finishing up the Open Space uh, Resources Inventory uh, just now. And uh, the final draft is, is uh, up for adoption. But uh, I think that one of the issues that we have to look at uh, is uh, the uh, recreation plan and how it relates to services that we already have in the township, and uh, how that how we can work together as departments and as commissions to bring some of those things to fruition. And I think it's I think it's a great plan. I'm absolutely in favor of uh, cleaning up uh, PB Park and ensuring that it's also profitable and that it's not a uh, financial loss to the uh, community. I'm not looking to uh, subsidize it. But uh, I think that we need to have more joint meetings and more joint reports and inventories to address some of those issues and shared resources. Next question. Uh, and anybody, uh, what's the number one reason why I should vote for each one of you? I know why you're going to vote for Jay. <laughs> Jay, you know, for you know, <laughs> 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 Thanks for that question. That's a, that's a great question. I was waiting for somebody to ask that. Uh, I, so, uh, I, I just about have my, my own seat in uh, council chambers. It's, it's not on the side of the dais that I would prefer. Uh, but uh, that's about how many meetings uh, I've been to in the past several years. And I feel that attending the meetings regularly and being on the commission is essential to that gearing up process of, of learning the job and uh, being aware of what's involved and having the knowledge to be able to step in directly uh, because I, I don't think there's any time to waste uh, as soon as people are elected. So. All right, other than that, I'm running with your husband. I, I believe that... <laughs> I didn't use my full minute. Uh, <laughs> um, as I mentioned in my, my opening comments, you can tell I'm pretty involved in town. I'm committed to the town. Uh, my dedication and integrity to the town, I think, I'm a, makes me a valuable candidate for town council. Got a lot better. Are you going to take that? <laughs> yeah. All right. I won't get you both have to love the job. Uh, it takes time. It takes effort. you got to like people. Uh, you know, I, I give my heart to it, and, and that's why I would ask you to vote for me again. I uh, really enjoy doing it. I think I bring something to the town. I think every one of us up here is a dedicated volunteer to the town, and more than a few of us are at almost every council meeting. Chris can make more than most of us, but that's fine. Um, I think the reason you should vote for me above anyone else is that I think from what you've seen tonight, what the town really needs is a real Republican leader that can work on the town's behalf with the other branches of government and with the other municipalities surrounding us. And out of everyone here tonight, maybe except Jay, because he's been there for eight years, I think I'm that person that has those relationships in place that can immediately start to working 
with other people in government to benefit the town. We're not one fish in the sea. And we really need someone that has the ability to work across a wide spectrum to, to do the most good, and I believe I'm that person. I believe you are somebody who's going to do what they say they're going to do. And no matter what people on the other side of this, this table when you're sitting here, whether it's as a board member or town council, is going to stick to what they said they were going to do, no matter what people are saying on the other side. Keep their promise and, and be absolutely devoted to Paquanica Township. It must be our only and primary concern. Yes, there's an outside world around here, but it all needs to be focused in the prison of Paquanica Township. And I believe you want somebody who's going to get in there and fight and get the job done when others tell them it can't happen. And I believe I've done that over the last five years, and I would look forward to doing it as a member of the council. Although only in town for a few short years, I definitely love this town. I throw my hat in the ring. I volunteer a lot. I give back as much as I can. I'm a true leader. I'm passionate, and I get things done. I'm not a politician. I'm not looking to get up the food chain. I am only concerned with the township of the corn. That's it. Just another book for your house. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. The Master Recreation Plan uh, that deals with the Township of Aquatic, does that not include all the fields, including the school board fields, as well as the township fields, and the, ma the, you know, the maximum usage that you can get out of all those fields? It was amended for that, yes. Well, that's what I heard. It doesn't sound like that. That's what it was. I just wanted to ask that question and can get clarification. Yeah, clear. He's on the council, I'm on the board. The board and the council agreed to jointly participate in that study. We did it first, and then we revised the idea of field study. So that is combined. It's combined. Yeah. Thank you. Henry, I just, just to, to piggyback on that general question, I think what the town needs to do a better job of and what it's starting to do a decent job of is working with the Board of Education. Uh, I first ran for council six years ago uh, when Doc Shibby passed away. And when I ran then, I said, you know, it's kind of ridiculous that the Board of Ed hires a private company to maintain its fields when we have a DPW department that does that for the town. And lo and behold, four or five years later, a shared services agreement was reached between uh, the Board of Education and the town council. And now DPW and Parks and Rec does just that. So we need someone that's willing to work across with other boards and other commissions and with other towns uh, to implement more shared services so that we can get a better return on our property tax dollars. And that has to do a lot with you know open space funds being used for both school and town fields and just working together in general. Change of maintenance came directly. The change of maintenance of the fields came directly with change of managers and uh, a more open policy of working with support of it. I'm also a, a high school umpire, and uh, I tell you what, the DPW is doing a fantastic job on the fields that uh, they have at the high school. Uh, the varsity uh, baseball field has never looked in the last probably eight years as good as it has. So uh, DPW should be uh, commended on the job that they're doing uh, for the Board of Ed. Yeah, ditto on that. Uh, the town has done an amazing job with the Board of Education. Our grounds have never looked so good. I sit on the joint committee between the Board and the Township Council, and we continue to explore various ways that we can work together. Some work, some don't. Um, some are more popular than others, but that's what we do. We meet every month to try and come up with ways that two bodies can work together and save money. Again, I'm not familiar with the master plan, but again, I want the best for this town as long as we're going to be fiscally responsible about that. About it. Thank you. Chris? Yeah, Frank.
Mr. Missouri. Uh, I guess you all know me. I'm chairman of the Open Space Committee. And I'm sorry to hear that some of you don't like uh, what we're doing. But uh, on Ken's website, and we just stated again tonight, that we're buying 88 homes. Uh, that's not a fact. And does anybody on the board know exactly how many homes Morris County has contributed, as is going to contribute to the hazard mitigation fund? As far as the ADA is concerned, that report is still out there, posted by the county. I put the link on the website so people can see the report is coming from the county. Um, if, if, if the county is incorrect, well, then that's the report that they're publicly putting out there and saying that the, as far as they're concerned, the dollar amount equals 88 homes. I hear that you're disagreeing with that, but that's what the county's reporting. And it is a documented number that's available online uh, from a county website. I have in my bag right here a news articles that was published in the paper, both in the trades, both in the record. It was actually 103 homes, 15 in Pequonic, 29 in Denver, Parsippany, Lincoln Park. There's more than Pequonic that's involved in those 88 homes that you're talking about. And it's not really 88. Because that was the original first message that we put out. Yeah. Yeah, it's not in the question right, right now. Now you and I are debating, which we could do all night long when this is over. I'll be happy to. Well, <laughs> does anybody know exactly how many homes that Lawrence County is going to accommodate for the... I have some information on that. And that is a passionate man. That's a good thing. <laughs> not a bad thing. He, he really does break heart. But back to the 88 homes... It's actually from Morris County Freeholders released a statement on March 14, 2012. It's called the Proposed Flood Mitigation Program done by the Morris County Board of Chosen Freeholders. And it's called Municipal Buyout Project. Within that, Aquanic was labeled as 88 homes, $11.4 million, or an average of $129,545 per home. The total, this was just for Morris County, the total was 18 municipalities, a total of 442 homes, a total of 128,730,000. Wow, we can come up with a lot of money for buyouts, can't we? How about mitigation? How about dredging? How about elevations? A lot of other things I can do with that money. Uh, this was referenced by Jennifer McCulloch from Morris County Department of Planning, which had a meeting with you, on March 22nd, 2012, as well as our town engineer and town manager. So that's where that comes from. Frank, to answer your question directly, I don't know how many homes are on the list. However, uh, to go back to the litany of numbers, Ryan just uh, ran off and I don't remember them at all. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think from what Ryan was saying and what I gleaned from it, from the amount of funding that we get and being one of those 14 municipalities, and considering the amount of devastation that we see in Pequot compared to some other towns in the county, we're not getting a fair return on our property tax money from the county. And we're not, we're not getting a fair return uh, given the amount of damage and the amount of homes that have sustained damage. So if elected, I would work with the county and I would lobby the county so that we get more funding so that we can help even more residents because we're not getting a fair shake. First, Frank, I think that you are probably one of the most dedicated volunteers the town has. And if I guess the right number, uh, I believe you have all of our signs on your lawn. Well, the other one's going to be 31 or 44? Close, 44 is close. Uh, one concern is we all attend council meetings. And this item has been brought up and corrected. And if we're grandstanding on campaigning, what's going to happen when we call the council? You know, AD is not the real number. And it was brought up at many council meetings. Corrected. So I don't know why we're drawing on it and throwing it out there. You know, council talked a long time that, you know, the number of 40 is about all we can sustain. It has not put a tax burden on the house because of all the increased development we've had. You know, if you ride around town, you see the new houses going up. You know, we're still a very desirable town, and we are not taking down houses. 
that are donating you know, eleven thousand dollars in tax base. You know, most of these are in the four or five thousand dollar range. And the floodway houses. So it's a double purpose of getting those people out of there. But you know, the number's been brought up many, many times that it is not eighty eight. Uh, you know, uh, Jay stole my thunder. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, correct. And uh, since uh, Frank's not up here and can't debate, I, I do want to affirm his numbers are correct. As Mayor Phelan also affirmed at the uh, two council meetings back. Uh, but moreover, I just want to say as a candidate that uh, I find buyouts to be one of the least favorable uh, solutions to flooding, which should have been addressed after 84 and should not be happening now in the first place. Thank you. Frank, what's the right number? I want to read what? You can you can you can argue and you can debate over the number. Okay, first of all, it is it's, it's a county report, so clearly there's a planning document somewhere that indicates that, that that's that's there. I hear your comments that the council has made comments to the fact that they're not going to be purchasing that many homes. They also have made assurances that we're only buying homes along the floodway, and there are now houses being purchased a block over from the floodway on Oakwood. So um, the town frequently says things, and then something else happens. And now I, there's always a valid explanation for why it happens, but there are changes. Um, as far as I'm concerned, for me to make a statement that there is a proposed plan out there that the county freeholders are saying they're going to fund for 88 homes does factually exist. And the only argument is whether or not your number is accurate. And it's been a moving target over the, the period of time that I've gone to meetings. Not political grandstanding, okay? The issue is maybe the town and the county ought to get together and figure out what the real number is and then give the town people a, a, a list of what exactly they're buying and why. I don't agree with buyouts in most cases anyway. I think we should be looking at elevations unless the houses are just beyond survivable. And then I get that. It makes sense. But to buy up even 60 or 50 homes, that's 5000 a pop. Somebody's got to cover that tax nut. Two regards. The 88 number is just a figure that was released by Morris County uh, freeholders. The number that I have from Frank from our meetings, correct me if I'm wrong, Frank, uh, as of 515-12, we bought 63 homes, three of which, which are actually lots. So that's what the tax of the quantity is actually invested in. And I believe we also agreed that for every 10 homes, is about a hundred thousand dollars in lost liability or lost revenue. Yeah. Every twenty homes was about a hundred thousand. So you know, sixty homes, three hundred k, ten years, three million. It's still lost revenue. That's not what I said. I have it right here. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. We've had no. one right. hour <clears throat> questions and answers. I'm going to take one last question. It's going to be from Heather. The candidates will be here. After they give their closings, they're going to be here. You're going to have some coffee. That's, coffee that's not there. fair to the rest of the I, audience. I have here. Friend, I have a procedure. This is not a Friend, so please, we have a procedure. It's not a council meeting. Sure. So unless I get a reputation for giving too many hardball questions here, there are a lot of new faces in this room. I'm really happy to see everyone. I hope you continue to come back to our Republican club meeting. Question. So my question is... Um, I would like, I think it's really important that when we elect a candidate here, you're giving, we're giving your nomination, not only to represent us here on the town council, but you're representing the Republican Party. The question to you is, how do you feel you represent the Republican Party well? Good question. Good question, Heather. Always count on her for the hard one. <laughs> she married to her. Rob has to go last. Sorry about you. <laughs> My condolences. The reality is to be fiscally responsible, to do what's right for the community. I mean, it's good to be Republican. It's what I believe in. I'm a small business owner. I want to make sure we have the best for our town. I want to make sure we squeeze the most money out of our taxes. I want to make sure that, as Rob says, we get back what we're supposed to get back. I do not believe that we're doing that right now. And I believe we need to leverage that more. But I do believe that it's our responsibility to get as much money back into our towns as we can. Bottom line is, 
I consider myself not just a Republican, but a conservative Republican. And with their two main points of smaller government and less taxes. And I can assure you that on the less taxes side, my track record with the Board of Education, and there are people over there that will tell you I argue ad nauseum, okay, has been to constantly reduce spending and reduce the taxes, and we have been successful in doing that. So um, in terms of what are Republicans are looking for and claim is their, their credo, uh, which is lower taxes for better economic uh, return, uh, I've actually done it. You know, just like Ryan, I'm, I'm a small business owner and I opened up last January and I thank God every day that my small business is successful and that is helping support my family. That being said, small taxes, lower taxes and smaller government are two things that every Republican has to aspire to or else in my eyes, they can't call themselves Republican. But it comes down to your involvement in the party. And are you just a Republican because that's one way to get elected in this town? Or are you a Republican because that's something you've espoused for over... I joined this club six years ago, not 60 days ago. I've been up and down in politics. I've worked with good people. I've worked with some people that I wouldn't work for again. But I love this party. And just like John Crick has said, or Thomas Trangelo said, on June 6th, we'll come together as a party. But it's the party involvement, and it's the networking that you do with other elected officials that will make the difference. It's being able to work across the board with other Republicans. And that's your wife. <laughs> um, doing more with less. Um, you know, there's uh, some great things that are going on in, in Trenton, but it's not just the Republicans that are doing it in Trenton. They're working together, the Democrats and the Republicans, mm -hmm. to get things done. So it's not the same old thing, no, you know what, it's a Republican issue, we're not going to, the Democrats aren't going to support it. They're both supporting it down in Trenton. Yes, I've been a Republican since I've been 18 years uh, old. Um, and I joined, sure, I joined the Republican Club maybe 60 days ago. I'm very involved in town. Uh, taxes are a big thing, but doing more with less would probably be the, the, the number one thing. I think if you look at our track record over the last six, eight years, we've been doing more with less. And we're heading in the right direction. You know, we, we are financially responsible. We're moving along. Uh, what Rob said, you do have to be close to the party. You do need the county. Uh, you don't have the contacts. It's less likely to come back to the town. So it is good to be with the party, move along, support the uh, on the county level and above. But with all the other counties have said, we are moving in that direction, and we will continue to. Thank you. I want to make it clear that as a candidate, uh, as a volunteer in township, uh, and as a, a hopefully a future uh, council member, uh, I represent your views first, I represent your interests uh, first, uh, and any party and any ideological uh, system is going to have to come after your rights and your interests. Uh, I think that uh, you all work hard for your money, and I think that it's common sense that you have the right to keep as much of that money as, as is possible and to still have the uh, quality of life that uh, we enjoy. I, I do believe in small government. I do believe in lower taxes. Uh, I, I don't think there's a lot of people who are going to say that they don't believe in lower taxes, but that aside. Uh, I do think that though any candidate needs to put uh, the interests of the people first, and, and that's got to be the forefront. Thank you. Everybody here on, on this day is, uh, will put the needs of Laquanic residents first, and that's what our primary responsibility as a council member is, is to take the needs of the citizens and to address them, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or at a council meeting or as a group. 
But if, if you're not going to run as a Republican, then you shouldn't be in this primary. If you're an independent or a Democrat and you're just running as a Republican, then you shouldn't be in this primary. We have a party system in New Jersey and in this country for a reason. Because I'm going to stand here and I'm going to tell you these are my ideals. And by identifying myself as a Republican, you know you should know immediately what they are. That I'm a conservative, that I'm for a smaller government, and lower taxes. And part of that smaller government is to put the needs of my constituents at the forefront. But I'm a Republican. And that's why I'm running in this primary. If I wasn't, I'd have a much easier time just to bypass the primary and go to the general. But I'm a Republican, and that's something I hold very dearly. And just quickly, you know, we're talking about Republican, okay? At 18, I registered to vote. I registered as a Republican and at Montclair State College. At the time, I was part of the Republicans for uh, students for Reagan. Worked in that campaign when, trust me, everybody on campus was, was going with Jimmy Carter and told us we didn't know what we were talking about. And, uh, you know, we, we argued the, uh, the, the Republican cause, and fortunately we won, and we ended up with a decade of prosperity. So, look, I believe in, in the Republican Party and, and what it should be standing for. Um, unfortunately, it, it wanders off the reservation once in a while, but um, the bottom line is, have been a Republican since I was able to vote, and will always be. Thank you for the questions. Uh, now we'll have the closing arguments. We can start down. This is the What do we get for this I just want to thank everyone uh, again for coming tonight. It's wonderful that we have a populace that takes such an interest in the officials who will represent them in government. I look forward to serving the interests of the entire township as councilman, and I ask that you vote Lotito on June 5th so that I can put my years of experience on the Historic District Commission, Environmental Commission, Flood Committee, and Open Space Commission to work for all of you. If anyone has any additional questions that you didn't get a chance to ask tonight, I just want to let you know that I can always be reached on my cell phone at 973-934. 5556. If you don't have a pen, it's on all of my literature as well. Uh, it is essential that our politicians be accessible and open in order to represent the views of the people, and I hope that everyone here will take a moment in the next two weeks to speak to the neighbors and friends who are unable to join us tonight. Uh, remember, vote Lotito. Uh, before we move along, thank you, um, I, I do just want to take a moment to say that Though running for council is a happy occasion, there is a little bit of sadness in tonight as well as we sit with veteran Councilman Engelbart in the audience instead of up here with us. Uh, Councilman Engelbart is not only an amazing resource to this community, but has been a mentor to many of its youth and contributed to quite a few eco projects over the years. All of the council candidates would like to thank Mr. Engelbart for his 16 years of service. <laughs> Democrat, thank you. Again, I'd like to thank you all for coming out. Uh, we probably can post in this event. The Chronic's a great town. We have great people. I want to keep the town the way we love it. You've always strongly supported me in the past. I ask your support on June 5th. Please vote for Dave Cole and myself, positions four and five. Thank you. I'm not going to take the three minutes. Uh, my closing is going to be brief. I love this town. I love the people that live in this town. Uh, it's a wonderful town. Both Jay and I are committed to serving uh, all of the Quantic residents, from our youngest citizens to our senior citizens. On June 5th, please vote Cole Vanderhoff, 4 and 5. Thank you all for coming out tonight. I'd also like to thank you uh, coming out, for coming out tonight. Um, there are too many people in our town that don't care about this election. And the fact that you've taken time out of your evening to come here and become an informed voter that says volumes about the people in this room and a portion of our citizenry. And I hope to see more people fill these seats in years to come. I think what you've heard tonight, we're all very dedicated um, 
and all in our own special ways. But I think what you can take away from tonight is that we need a real Republican leader, someone who is in the role of leadership, and someone who can work with others across the board. We don't need a note taker. We don't need a vice chair. We need someone who isn't afraid to take the baton and run with it, and to take responsibility for those organizations that they lead. I believe I'm that person, and on June 5th, I ask you to vote for real Republican leadership. Myself, Rob Cascone, number three on the ballot. Thank you. You've had an opportunity to hear from all of us this evening, ask your questions, hear our responses. And now it's up to you to take what you've heard tonight, review the experience, the track record of the candidates, and make a final decision. This is not a beauty contest. Thank God, because I'd be in big trouble. <laughs> Ain't a popularity contest. I wouldn't fare much, well, much, much better with that. It's not about who's friends with who, and these are all nice guys. I, I talked to them before, I'll talk to them after, and, and you know, we have our disagreements, but the bottom line is we all care about one thing, and that's for Kalonic Township. I'm born here, educated here, and when I die, there's a place for me right across the, the, the street. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. Um, this is about who's going to fight for Pequon, no matter what the consequences, and stay true to what they tell you they stand for. And I believe that Ryan Hurd and I are those candidates, and I ask for your support on June 5th. I'm going to reference something that Chris said in his opening statement, and he's right. These are all good guys. A lot of volunteering. We need that. We need more volunteers in town. We need more people that are interested in town. For town council, we need leadership. We need people that are willing to make the hard decisions, sometimes popular, sometimes unpopular. We need somebody that's willing to do it for the township, the entire township, not one part, not one section, the entire township. We need somebody that's going to be a leader that's going to put the township in front of them. I believe that I am your man, Ryan Hurd, Ken Hardacre, so please vote for us, positions one and two. Thank you. I want to thank the six of you. It's not easy to come up here and put yourselves out there. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody else for coming here this evening. It's greatly appreciated. I'm sure the candidates will be around for a while. And